Continuing Canto 3, we, we completed discussing the verses from chapter 12, so we're moving on to chapter 13, and we're going to start, because I've already covered the first two verses, we're going to start with text 11. Just a little refresher for those that weren't with us yesterday. The previous chapter um, creation of the Kamaras and others, so we heard about some others. Some of the others, two of the others were the first Manu. Swaimuvamanu and his wife Shatarupa, they were manifested directly from the body of Brahma when he was contemplating, gee, the universe isn't filling up with living entities. And I created the universe and I set things in motion and Somehow, it's a providential plan that is happening this way. Destiny is the word that's used. And so he was accepting the destiny, but he was also contemplating, because he had some service to do, how to do that service. And Bhavati, voila, two living entities is, came from his body. to carry out whatever service was wanted. So chapter 12 ends with that message and chapter 13 begins. They're saying, Swamibhavamanda was saying, some service? What service would you like of us? We're ready. Just instruct us, we want, you are our father, and we want to carry out whatever it is that you want, just let us know. And so, um, Lord Brahma says, I'm very ple pleased with you. And I desire all blessings for both you and your wife. You have without reservation surrendered yourself unto me with your heart for my instructions. And what you can imagine the purport. <laughs> oh, hero, your example is quite befitting a son in relationship with his father, this sort of adoration for the superior as required, those, one who is beyond the limit of envy, and who is sane, kind of seems like they would go together, but maybe not. Accepts the order of his father with great delight and executes it to his full capacity. Now, the relationship in this case is father and son, but Prabhupada naturally has extended it to um, one who is looked up to as a superior and I'm subordinate and, you know, shishyas teham shadimam tvam prapanam, the message of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna submitting himself, or Sanatana Goswami submitting himself, and the, the sages of Naimisharanya submitting themselves to 
to Sutta Goswami, Maharaj Pariksit submitting himself to Shukadeva Goswami. It's a principle. And just some appreciation, a little detail on that principle. I, I learned something from visiting South India, uh, the places where Lord Chaitanya visited. Um, the, there's a place where Lord Chaitanya visited where it's known as the place of surrender. And it's the place where many persons surrendered, but one of the surrenders, prominent one, is where Vibhishan came with four ministers and surrendered to Lord Ramachandra. Then there's this whole thing that went on. He didn't just directly surrender to Lord Chaitanya, excuse me, to Lord Ramachandra. He surrendered, he sent through the, the devotees of Lord Ramachandra his will, his desire to be accepted and his submission to be accepted. And so he's hovering in the air with some mystic power and his four ministers behind him and there's this back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because in a fitting manner Lord Ramachandra asked his advisors and his ministers, what do you think, what do you think, what do you think? And they all had a different thought. None of them was like, yeah. And Simon was Hanuman until called upon, and then Hanuman said, I think you've already accepted him. <laughs> because even if he has some motivation, blah, 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 because the others were saying, but if he has motivation, Maybe he knows that Robin is going to be defeated and he's next in line and so he wants to be on the good side of you and so maybe he's got a motivation, Hanuman said. But the, that's not the essence. The essence is his submission to you. So if it's mixed bhakti, he's submitting to you, You'll, you've already accepted him. So we should accept him. And then Ram said, very famous quote. One who even wants, so there's a group of Sri Vaishnavas that hang on to this, just wants, not an ongoing submission, just wants, just submit for that day forward. I give my solemn vow that person will be protected. to surrender once. <laughs> that our, our, so that, that saying of Lord Ramachandra it, it, it epitomized or was an example of what after Ramanujacharya resulted in a split in the followers of Ramanujacharya. Some said ongoing submission, some said just once. And then so there's two groups. It happens. There's a groupism. <clears throat> so, specific to that place of surrender, connected to what's going on here, the surrender of uh, Manu to Lord Brahma, mind you, these two are Mahajans. They're not like, they're not like us. They're great authority. They're the greatest authorities the tw of the twelve Mahajans, there's two. So, when Vibhishan was surrendering, the, the Sri Vaishnavas, they have commentary on Ramayana, like we have come, our Gaudiyas have commentary on Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. They're Ram Bhaktas and him obviously have different takes on things. But 
one of the prominent appreciations of this place of surrender is the four ministers, the nice point, the four ministers of Vibhishan that came with him, they represent the characteristics of submission to a superior. So it kind of breaks it down a little bit. You know, Padma Prana says there's six limbs of surrender. And their commentators say that there's, it's a contradictory statement, but there's four aspects. Two have to do with um, the, the sur person who is surrendering, and two have to do with the one who is being surrendered unto. So the two that are characteristics of the one surrendering, they're somewhat similar, but one's positive and the other is negative. So the positive is full submission, unconditional full submission, blank slate, like Sanatana Goswami Prabhupada's expression. Blank slate. You can write on me whatever you want. I'm ready. And um, the other is no other shelter. Full submission and not hedging. Well, Jiva Goswami comments, not specific to this Vibhishan event, but the King Nriga, his hedging was, he was a Krishna Bhakta, he hadn't seen Krishna, but he heard about Krishna and he wanted to see Krishna. He was a contemporary, he wanted to see him. You know, I want to see you, I want to know you. He didn't, you know, make a hit song, but that was his desire. And just in case he wanted to, he put some, he had another basket. The other basket was, let me do some punya for a king. And then that, you know, help my, my punya accumulation will help me get what I want. Because you don't need, but it was the, the, the intention behind the punya that giving in charity of cows to brahmanas was for that purpose. It was a karmakanda intention. There's nothing wrong with giving cows, but it was a karmakanda intention. So behind what we do, intention is really important. Somebody was asking that yesterday. Really important. Not, we may not start with that really important element because we have mixed intentions. We have things that are differently important to us. So, those are the two from the submission side. And then from the surrendered unto side, they, they have, they're ready to give when there is that submission, like Krishna. You surrender unto me, and that, that then the protection comes. And so the second part is one has the, the capacity, the power to give the protection. The, the, you know, don't become a mother or father or a teacher or a guru unless you have that qualification. So the child, in this case, Swamibhumanu, submitting unto Brahma, Brahma has the qualification. We heard yesterday and day before, he's superlatively qualified. His body is Shadrana. And even after he gave up his first body, that Shadrana capacity stayed with him, etc. He's, he's, he's qualified. And um, he's recognizing the submission, the unmixed, unmotivated submission of Swami Bhavamanu. 
great combination. It's the combination of leading to perfection. So now we'll go to text 11. Since you are my very obedient son, I ask you to beget children qualified like yourself in the womb of your wife. Rule the world in pursuance of the principles of devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here that the Varnashram system. And thus worship the Lord by performance of yajna, the three things. Purport. The purpose of the material creation by Brahma is clearly described herein. Every human being should beget nice children in the womb of his wife as a sacrifice for the purpose of worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service. So, the, the, the purpose behind the Vedas is to please the person. Pur the purpose behind life, guided by the Vedas, is whatever you do, Krishna is to be pleased. And there's guidelines of how you do this, that, and the other service, that's the Daivi Varnashram system, but the essence is not just the behavior, the essence is the purpose behind. In Vishnu Purana 3, 8, 9, it is stated, famous verse, Varnashram Acharapata Purushena Parakuman Vishnur Arajate Pantha Nanyatatoshakaranam. One translation. One can worship the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu by proper discharge of the principles of Varna and Ashram. There is no alternative to pacifying the Lord by execution of the principles of the Varnashram system. Paragraph. Vishnu worship is the ultimate aim of human life. Those who take the license of married life for sense enjoyment must also take the responsibility to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, and the the first stepping stone is the Varnashram Dharma system. Varnashram Dharma is the systematic institution for dancing in worship of Vishnu. However, if one directly engages in the process of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God, it, it may not be necessary to undergo the disciplinary system of Varnashrama Dharma, the other sons of Brahma, the Kumaras, directly engaged in devotional service and thus they had no need to execute the principles of Varnashram Dharma. Well, it's a hot potato. <laughs> Varnashram Dharma. Little sharing. Um, Sometime back, I had your question. Yeah, there, there were um, executive committee meetings of the North American GBC, you know, some GBCs and some other invited people, and held in Chicago. And I volunteered to assign topics to the speakers so that the devotees present and could be recorded and. Know, topics that then the, the, the ESCON devotees in North America could hear their leaders speaking on topics that would be perhaps relevant and hopefully relatable. So one of the topics was Varnashram, because Prabhupada writes about it, and Nutama was the chosen person to speak, and when he spoke, Shiva Ramarsh was very interested in the Varnashram topic. He heard the recording and he wrote to me saying, you know, 
<laughs> because Anuttama couldn't really relate to Varnashram, he gave examples. Just, he didn't have an understanding that Shiva Ramarsha, so I said, how about next year, you take the topic and you speak on the topic in a way that's different than what uh, Anuttama spoke. He said, yeah, I want to do that. So we had him Skyped in for a morning class. He's in Hungary, we're in Chicago. And his class was so wonderful. I called him up at, you know, after the class and said, would you be open to the idea of a seminar held in Gitanagri where the topic is exploring Varnashram? He said, yeah. So, Prajabihari got wind of it and said, hot potato. Meaning, there's people on this side and people on that side, and they, you know, you, you bring the topic and they get into a dispute. Mm -hmm. So the dispute resolution person, French Bihari, said, whoa, oh, hot potato, we can just divide, you know, this group and that group. So uh, you got to have balance here. So, so he agreed to be the facilitator. And it was a very balanced um, exchange. And you know, a, a, a nice resolution. One of the outstanding speakers during that event was Tukaram, who, you know, he's an interesting personality, to say the least. But, you know, what he's really good at is research. There's many things he's good at. One of the things he's really good at is research. He made a really, really brilliant, short, not long-winded presentation you know, there's the people on this side say this, the people on that side say that. What did Prabhupada want? And that, you know, he, you know, it was very logical. Not, you know, the research, I'm sure he could have said a bunch of things on both sides, because he, he knows what both sides say, what Prabhupada said, because he said sometimes, it's right here in the purport. And it's in, it's in many places. He said this, and then he said that, so which is it? And some people make reference to these quotes, and some people make reference to those quotes, and they get out their sticks, and they hit each other with quotes. <laughs> so he didn't do that. He just, like, so there's these two sides. Now, where do we go from here? And the, the, the short answer, conclusion, was something like this. Now, if he was in the room, he'd probably say, no, that's not what I said. <laughs> But I understood what he said, the conclusion was Varnashram that looked like prior to Kali Yuga, that's <coughs> not possible. Varnashram is essential because it's Krishna's social system. So we can't torpedo Krishna's social system because it's Kali Yuga. But it needs to be customized for our Vaishnava organization, he did want Varnashram for our Vaishnava organization. With the exception that there may be some superlative personalities, like the Kumaras, they don't have to follow Varnashram, or Shukadeva Goswami didn't have to be initiated, and you know, there's, there's exceptional personalities that be, because they're so exceptional, they don't require, you know, training wheels for to ride a bicycle. They can ride a bicycle. They, they, they're spontaneous, they're, they, they're, they, they, they do not require, but society in general requires, that it has to be, you know, realistic, according to time, place, circumstance. The detail, but the principle, is needed. That was kind of like his conclusion. It's not what I said, no, no, I should have said. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <laughs> it's, a, it's a topic of controversy. 
And just a little, um, another sharing. There's a, there's a devotee in the educate, the training and edu in, in China, they have a strategic plan and they're following it, or they're trying to follow it. And one of the sectors of their strategic plan, they have, you know, dealing with the government is one of them, but <coughs> uh, training and education. So one of the devotees involved in the training and education department has a lot of interest in two topics, Grihastha training, novel, and uh, Varnashram. Not more novel. And so they're asking, should we go in that direction? And I said, you know, I was thinking, better contact Prince Bihari. <laughs> you got to have a balanced approach. It can't be, you know, quote bashing. People say, why are you talking about this? And no, we got to talk about this. And so make sure you have a balanced picture of what it is and why it's important. And how to begin, because, okay, first is, is it important? And then is, how do you do it? And there's lots of impractical ideas about how to do it. And therefore, it never really gets any traction. Because it's not, it's not, at least the conclusion that we came to in this Gita Nagari, uh, exploring Varnashram, is it can't be just the model of Vedic times. It has to be a, a practical model. What are, what, so what does that look like? Anyway, it's not really evolved so well so far. But there are some balanced people that are really serious about applying it. In my opinion, Shiv Ramaraj is one of them. And uh, there's some section, Canto 7, Chapter 10, Chapter 11, Canto 7, Chapter 11, where Yudhisthira Maharaj is asking Narada Muni, who narrates the whole canto, um, wow, Prahlad Maharaj is way up there. How do you get way up there? I'm supposed to be the emperor of the world and I have to guide all the citizens of the world to go towards the goal. I like the goal. How do you get there? He didn't use that language, but that's his question. And Nara said, fantastic question. And Varnashram is that method. But before you can follow Varnashram, you have to become a human being. Because Varnashram is meant for human beings. And here's characteristics of a human being. So, in Hungary, for at least a year, um, after a year prior to that of how do we get there, how do we develop, not just at New Dam, not just at the farm, but the whole you know, wherever people live. It's this the social structure for human population and to do it for Krishna. So at the beginning they reach this conclusion, let's just spend time becoming human beings. Another novel idea. <laughs> It, you know, it's not like we put in the back seat Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, but the Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, that's the horsepower to become more human. So the, the, the horse is Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, and the cart is, is being pulled by the horses, become human. So they focused on the, the characteristics that are mentioned there. Like, you know, everywhere in the whole of Hungary, for this month we're going to focus on this one. And all the classes were focused on this one, and trying to apply, you know, going deeply into characteristics of a human being. Now, I don't know how far they got, 
like the, all the devotees become more human. That certainly wasn't a loss because it's Narada's instruction. Polish the diamond. So, back to the purport. We know <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's discussion with Ramananda Roy um, by the banks of the Kuveri that when Ramananda Roy suggested Varnashram, Lord Chaitanya said, that's external, go on. No, that didn't mean throw it in the garbage pan. It's, it's quoted and quoted and quoted and quoted, but it's standing alone is not sufficient. Doesn't mean trash it, it's standing, so if it's external, what, what's internal? What does it mean, what's internal? And how do you do it? So you can do a behavior, but not have the right consciousness behind the behavior. That's the external. That's one aspect of external. Following without clearly understanding the purpose behind. In Rupa Goswami's language, Shadbir Bhakti Vinashati. Doing without the purpose behind it. You, you miss the mark. So what's the mark? It's you know taking full shelter of the hearing and chanting process. That doesn't mean that you trash the varnashram part. The essence is the full. So that's that's what's being spoken here. If one directly engages in the process of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God, it may not be necessary to undergo the disciplinary system of Varnashram Dharma. And so he cites the Kumaras. They directly engage in devotional service, and thus they had no need to execute the principles. That doesn't mean that Swami Bhumano and his wife didn't directly engage in devotional service. But they're being instructed by Brahma, follow Varnashram standards when you become householders and do your duties in that way. Krishna gives similar arguments to Arjuna. Not like the essence of Bhagavad Gita is to perform your prescribed duty, but it's, you know, perform your prescribed duty. Mamanusmur Yujita. Yudhya, that means fight, so his duty as a Chhatri is his, his duty. Fight. And Mamanusmara, always think of me. It's external. It, you know, the external is karma yoga is insufficient without the complete form, the mature form, it's just like not yet mature form in one sense of bhakti. Everything is for Krishna. Maybe that's enough. I could go on to the next one. Anybody want to talk about Varnashram? Or any of these topics? See if there's some discussion. Yes. Maharaj, I remember uh, looking into that same section, Narayamuni and Yudhisthira that you mentioned, mm. and one scholar was characterizing those kind of principles of human life as Samanya Dharma, which is foundational to Varnashram Dharma, which is kind of like the practices once you have the principles. So can you share for us some of the principles of what it means to be a human? Or if you remember anything from Shiva well, Maharaj's... Well, no, not from Shiva Maharaj's topics, but from hearing Prabhupada, human, what's the duty of the human form of life? Self-realization. To know who you are. Animals can't, you can't bring animal in, let's, let's realize who you are, please. 
they don't have the capacity. So the human form, the human mission, is to know who you are. And who are you? So it starts from Abhuta or Hamprasmi, then next, you know, as a soul, I'm the servant of the Supreme Lord and all the cosmic manifestation is his and I meant to engage it in his service according to his standards and then you know continue further what's my eternal relationship with Krishna my spiritual form what's my sarup what's my rasa it can it unfolds but the starting point is Brahma so that's human that's human and without it animal you know Prabhupada was happy and again you know, not according verses and giving examples without surrender to Krishna. And then, that you, then you have a wrong understanding of Krishna and they don't surrender to Krishna and they're animals. Oh, heavy. Heavy. You know, depending on the audience, but you're heavy. So, that's the essence of human is to be inquisitive at least, Brahma Jinyasa. Atato, Atta, one of the now, now having achieved the human form of life, what's the mission? Inquire into Brahman. Who am I? You know, beyond the temporary, who am I? So the first principle is you're not the body. And how many people are living their lives with that understanding? So they're not human. Anyway, that's that's the, you know the harsh way of saying, but you know to say that the, the positive way is the human the essence of humanness is to know who you are. Knowledge, knowledge that removes ignorance. You know, lower species are in ignorance; they don't know who they are. And the beginning of the beginning of knowledge is self knowledge. Therefore, one can follow the Varnashram system and do it externally, not have a proper understanding of Krishna, and you know, it's external. It's not humanness yet. Yet. But without following the Varnashram system, so many times Prabhupada has said, what isn't, it's a Dripadapashu. Human life begins accepting Varnashram, but then. What's the humanness of our nashram? What's, what's the purpose of the Vedas? What's the purpose of... Because it's from the previous chapter. Chapter 12, where Brahma creates all, the, all these things. The purpose of all those things. The purpose of the Vedas. To know Krishna. So, Prabhupada's statement. I've been hearing him speak on this over and over. How can you know Krishna if you don't know yourself? Now... A misrepresentation is, well, we don't really try to understand Krishna, we just try to understand who we are. That's, you know, how can you understand yourself if you don't, if it's out of contact with Krishna? But, you know, the preliminary is to understand Brahman before you can more completely understand Bhagavan. So if someone doesn't have some Sudhir Hari Toshana, if they don't have that purpose in mind, they're not yet human life. Yeah. Hmm. And, and <clears throat> the Bhagavatam is in, instructing us, and we are to be carriers of the Bhagavatam message when we're doing our outreach. It is not like you get a stick and you hit people, but we should be clear when we're doing outreach, we're reaching people just as Prabhupada did. He was reaching people that he knew, you know, they're unqualified, they're animals. Now, some cases he didn't speak that way, in some cases he spoke that way. But he knew what his mission was, is to bring people to the, you're not the body.
and it, it, under with with the 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 purity of descending knowledge through the subject succession with that, with that fidelity and focus convey the message customized for the audience no problem and with compassion but you know it, it, after saying all these sometimes heavy things his real intention he stated at the end almost always be happy Prasanatma. Now how can you be happy if you have a misconception of who you are? If you don't know who you are. You're going to be you know, a happy animal. That's not happy. And then perpetuate it. So, yes? I miss the second point of uh, the characteristic of one who is being surrendered onto. He said there are two characteristics. Yes. Uh, the first one that I got was they have to have the capacity to be able to give, the power to give. To this is on the receiving end. Yes. The, yeah, the person being surrendered to. Yes. What, what was the second characteristic? I, I, it, and, I'm trying to remember, but my, my, the best of my memory is um, their willingness to accept. You know, the the uh, saralata, that's my memory. That they're, so that, that can be the submitting person, but it can also be, you know, they, they, they receive the submission willingly. They have the power to reciprocate, but they they give that shelter, the willingness. As opposed to those that are the liberationists, that they're not interested in extending themselves. They're interested in their own liberation. But, you know, the person to be surrendered unto is they're willing to extend. And it gets it, it gets involved sometimes, usually. But the willingness in reciprocation with that submission. I'll I'll if it's different than that I'll let you know. In fact I'll send you a little document that spells it out with the Sanskrit terms that the Sri Vaishnavas use. And you can share with others. We're done. She looked over five feet. John. 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 John.